us then, how do we know that we have embarked, as it were, on an authentic start to the life of saving faith? What is it that I must look for in my own heart and history and testimony and attitude even in the present? Well, there must be submission to the verdict of the divine judge, God. The verdict is that I am a guilty sinner. Me, pastor of the church, I'm a guilty sinner. I'm a transgressor. I'm a breaker of the holy law of God and, and therefore justly under the curse of God. I'm under a death sentence, under condemnation. I have no excuses for my condition. No merits to put on the table. There's no in terms of the language of the law courts today, mitigation of sentence that I can ask for. My best performances are as filthy rags in the sight of God, who knows that even the best I do in and of myself are motivated by selfish motives, self-love, self-interest, rather than for the glory of God. And so where does that leave me? I can only plead guilty. I must hide my face in shame. But, but, as the gospel of God's grace is applied to my troubled conscience by the power of the Spirit at work in, in the world, in my life, hope revives. That's the good news. And, and, and it goes on from there. He makes known to me this amazing fact. Opens my eyes. Remember the additional eye and, and hand. He, he opens the eye, my eye to see this, this fact. The Lamb of God died so that all who bow to God's verdict own themselves as lost. We hate our sins, and but we have hope to live. And then there's the next step. Human responsibility as this feeble, shaking hand, uh, as it were, a faith stretching forth a trembling hand laying hold of the Redeemer, criminal is pardoned and accepted by God. In fact, that's where Abel's sacrifice takes us. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. He was accepted, he was commended by God. Why, however, is Abel's offering more excellent than Cain's offering? Genesis 4 verse 3, In the course of time Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. Now there's an interesting application that we must give our thoughts and apply our mind to. We who claim to be religious must take careful note that Cain was not an atheist. He was not even an agnostic. He acknowledged the existence of God. He even came before God in worship. But his problem was he refused to conform or to submit to God's appointed way of salvation. 